This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Fine, I'm a Tesla fanboy. I watch a ton of Tesla YouTube videos. I follow a lot of Tesla related YouTube channels. And one of the best ones out there, in my opinion anyway, is Teslanomics run by Ben Sullins. Now look, you know, I'm on YouTube. I make my living on YouTube. I am officially a YouTuber, I guess. Um, but I watch YouTube just like you guys do. You know, I have channels that I follow. I have people that I, I really like as much as you like me, I hope, maybe, hopefully. But the cool thing about being a YouTuber is that sometimes you actually get to meet some of these people that you follow and you like so much and you get to know them and, and do things together and Ben Sullins is one of those people for me. Ben is basically a data nerd in a surfer's body. Like that's actually where he came from. His background is in data science. And what I like about his channel is it really cuts through all the hoopla. There's a lot of hype around Tesla, both good and bad, but he comes at it from a data science perspective, which is refreshing. Now Ben and I collaborated before I interviewed him. Uh, for my podcast, but we've never actually, you know, met in person. But uh, he always said that if I ever got down to San Diego to hit him up and we'd go uh, do something together. But uh, I was in Palm Springs recently for ClamorCon 2018, and I let him know that I was coming. And he drove two hours from San Diego up to Palm Springs so that we could shoot this video together. And he brought his Model 3 with him. And he let me drive it. Now Ben and I talked about a lot of stuff, I'll get into all that in just a minute, but I wanted to back up real quick and explain why this was such a big deal to me. I am a Model 3 reservation holder, I put the reservation down the day that they revealed it, that was back in April 2016, and uh, yeah, this is going to be my next car. So this was me finally getting a chance to test drive my next car, basically. I've been waiting two years for this. But actually, no, I've been waiting 15 years for this. You know those huge moments in your life, like when you first fall in love with somebody, or your first kiss, or when you land your dream job? Those, those memories that just embed themselves in your psyche, and you can go right back to those memories, and you can remember everything about it. It's like you can step right into it. It's like you're there. For some reason, finding out about Tesla was one of those moments for me. I was working at an advertising agency right out of college. This was 2000. 2003 something like that and uh, I had an office for some reason so I'm on my lunch break and I'm screwing around on the internet and I read this article about this company that wants to make really cool electric sports cars I saw a picture of the Roadster which was amazing it was basically an electrified Lotus I saw how fast it was I saw that it got 200 miles per charge which at the time most EVs only got like 80 miles per charge yeah, I was excited. Because I've been a fan of electric cars, or at least the idea of electric cars, for a really long time, but back then it looked like every single electric car was designed by Dr. Seuss. It's like they went out of their way to make it look as ugly and impotent as possible, and then when nobody bought them, they'd be like, see, nobody wants to buy electric cars. And I was always like, well, maybe if you didn't make it like the ugliest car that was ever made. And then, of course, was the big, you know, General Motors EV1 fiasco in the 90s that was documented in that movie. Who Killed the Electric Car, which had just come out just before this, and it got me all conspiratorial and tinfoil hat about it. So the idea of a startup with the backing of the PayPal guy that wants to make really cool electric cars that can outperform gas cars, yeah, I was in. And I've been following Tesla ever since. Now, I couldn't afford a Roadster, obviously, because I'm not a millionaire, and I couldn't afford the S or the X, but the 3, the car for the masses, I mean, it's still nowhere near cheap, but you know, if I saved up for a few years, Maybe. Now I insisted on seeing the car first. I know like 100,000 people or so actually reserved their car before they even saw it. I refused to do that. I insisted on seeing it first. I just had to make sure it wasn't hideous. So here I am two years later, as we all know, the Model 3 has hit a bunch of bottlenecks and delays in the production. And I'm just kind of sitting here wondering, uh, when am I gonna get this? Could I even afford it? Will I even like it? Am I gonna have to do things to my garage? You know, what if I get in the car and it turns out to be something that's not what I want? And then I wind up in Palm Springs and Ben comes up there to see me and it all leads to this. Okay, all your controls are on this side. Mm -hmm. Up, down, drive, reverse, park, etc. So when you pull up in a parking spot like this, you push a button in. Oh, okay. There and that's go. park. Okay. So I need to like press the brake and then press pull the down. brake and then pull. Yeah, push all the way down. Oh. All right. Yeah. So it was that was easy entry. So they have different oh, okay. driver profiles. Okay. So there's me and my wife, and then there's valet. So let's go do it. Pull down. All the way. And it goes back up. Yeah. Okay. So after a little bit of figuring it out, we got on the road to our destination, but uh, actually wait. 
before I say where we went, I've got to show you how we got there. All right, we need to get your coffee, right? Yeah. All right, so push that button in. This yeah, one? Push, push it in. Navigate to coffee. So the Ace Hotel has a Tesla charger, and across the street is a coffee place. Okay. So we can go there. Okay, good. The Model 3 has limited voice activation. All you have to do is say where you're going, and it gets directions for you. Now I know my phone can do the same thing and I've used it like that plenty of times and maybe this is something that's totally normal on new cars these days, I don't know, but something you have to understand when I'm talking about my impressions of the Model 3 is that I drive a 13 year old car. This is like sorcery to me. But that's a major reason why I want to get a Model 3. I hold on to things like cars, phones, computers, big ticket items as long as possible. I don't go get a new iPhone every time the newest iPhone comes out. I hang on to my phone until it's just useless. But then when I do get a new phone, I make sure and get the newest best phone that I can because I intend to keep it a while. And even people who have had problems with the Model 3, the fit and finish issues, issues with the company, that kind of thing, they all still rave about the technology. Since the car is basically a computer on wheels, they can improve its performance and even add functionality by just doing over the air updates. It actually gets better over time. And at a time when the world is changing so rapidly, I want a car that's gonna be able to change with it. This is something Ben and I talked about in our conversation. One of the reasons why I am kind of really bullish on the, the Model 3 is it's a very future-proof car. And like like you said, they, they, they've installed hardware for things that it can't even do yet. There's a, so many, yeah. The hardware is, is light years ahead of the software, which to me, as a guy that's worked in tech for a long time, I don't understand. To me, that seems way more difficult. So there is so much more to come in this car. Yeah. And speaking of Ben, we talked a little bit about his background as a data scientist and how he uses that to talk about Tesla. Well, the, the whole theme of the channel is that, you know, you free the data and your mind will follow, right? So I'm trying to like cross those two boundaries of like covering something, but using the data to tell the story instead of my own opinion or individual anecdotes, which is kind of what you see a lot of. Mm -hmm. And you look at you know, some negative piece, and then you look at the actual numbers and you go, look, that was basically a hit piece mm -hmm. that was meant to get views. You know, the definition <clears throat> of clickbait. And there are few people in the world other than Elon Musk that are really making great strides. So at times he deserves some praise and credit. Yeah. At other times he, he deserves some criticism. And I try to I try to balance that, you know, and I try to focus on the numbers. I don't care what people's opinions are generally. I care what the data shows. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I focus on. Yeah. yeah, that's the idea. Of course, I couldn't take a test drive without testing out that zero to 60 time. Um, you can right. do it now. Okay, ready? Yeah, go. All right, a little bit of a curve. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, and the construction zones, so that's good. Perfect. And I've test driven a Model S before, and I do think the S was a bit quicker, but there was no shortage of butterflies in your stomach in this one. It's just, it's nothing like driving a gas car. Combined with the tight steering and the lighter load of the Model 3, you just feel like you could put that car anywhere you want on the road instantly. It's, it's, it's a fun ride. And of course there's autopilot, which I've never used before, so we tested it out on a curve. Here's how that went. But have you done autopilot yet? I haven't. Would that be a good time to play with it? Let's do it. Okay, so you just like t tap it down twice? Yep, you got it. That's it. Oh, okay, oh, god. oh my god. <laughs> We're taking a turn right now. But, so it gives you like a minute before you have to put your hand back on the wheel, right? You're fine. Yeah, don't okay. worry about it's it. Actually, relax. Really slow. Nice. Relax, he says. <laughs> It's actually doing pretty so good. So you get used to this though. I yeah. can definitely see this in stop and go traffic. Yeah, that's ideal. Um, but actually, yeah, it, the thing about getting used to it is that's when you get into danger. The, the accidents you hear about when people are in autopilot is because they've become complacent and expecting it to do too yeah. much. When somebody's brand new to autopilot, they're so nervous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the opposite. There's, they're not gonna get into an accident on autopilot. Okay, so it's giving me the warning. Yeah, so, so give it a little, just kind of a, there you go. Oh, okay, so I was wondering if it had like sensors with. No, it, what it wants to do is, is feel you give it a little nudge. Okay, so I'm actually going really slow right now. Do I hit that to speed up? Scroll or? wheel up. Oh. Scroll wheel up, boom. Oh, that's it's awesome. It's restricted to 45. We are going through a dip, so this is going to oh, be okay. good. Oh. Well, that went no problem. <laughs> I, I took it out. <laughs> ah, okay. No worries. Well, it was a red light anyways. Yeah. So that's the thing people so don't would, know would it, either. Would it stop at a red light? No. Oh, okay. All right. No, it is not. You're not supposed to use it on surface streets. 
Okay. Like we're doing it here, you know, as an example, but um, <laughs> don't don't do what we do, kids. Definitely not. Now I'm gonna be honest. I really don't see me using autopilot all that often, just because most of the driving I do is on you know service roads in and around my neighborhood. But I could definitely see how helpful it can be in a long drive or in stop and go traffic. It really, after having experienced it, it really hones in the fact that there are people driving 60 miles an hour and then getting out their phone and checking their email or reading a book or falling asleep. There are stories of people doing that and of course they wind up having accidents and that leads into more negative coverage of Tesla and its autopilot features. This was something that got both of our wrinkles up. And that's why I get so frustrated when I see all these videos. Like I saw some guy do it through a construction zone <laughs> and I'm going, dude, Yeah. like, Yes, it worked, and congratulations on getting a popular video on YouTube. You could have killed somebody, yeah. and then that would have been a way worse thing for all of us. Yeah. I really find it irresponsible when people do stuff like that. I don't, don't want to sound like victim blaming for people who are in accidents or something, but like if, if you use the, the technology the wrong way and it causes an accident, not only could you hurt yourself, but you're kind of keeping the whole progress of technology down <laughs> because, right. because people become afraid of this. Yeah. and don't want to use it. Now we talked about a lot of things on this drive. In fact, we actually did two interviews in there. One is for his channel and one's for mine. If you want to hear mine in its entirety, I'll link to the podcast right here or a link down in the description. And if you want to catch the other side of this, if you want to catch Ben's interview with me and uh, all the stuff that we cover and he talks about some other things too on his video, I will put another link there. Also another link in the description, go check it out. But alas, our day out had to come to an end. We drove back to the hotel and I tested the auto park feature and then I chickened out. Uh, but then we shared some final thoughts. So that actually, turn by turn wise, that becomes, a, to me, a, a serious distraction and a problem. Yeah. Well, But that could change, that's easy fix. And I know the people who have had a Model S that was like in front of them there. Correct, like this whole thing pops up yeah. immediately behind there. It's super awesome. It's just, for me, it's like, I'm, I'm used to doing this with my phone. <laughs> right. And, and getting into Rex and it's like, to yeah. me, that's, that's, that's 10 times better. Right. You know? No, it, th that's the thing. It's perspective, right? So yeah. coming from anybody, and this is my opinion, coming anybody coming from a Model S or Model X is going to feel a little slightly dis disappointed like there are things missing right. because there are. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, if you're coming from a 13-year-old Volkswagen, uh -huh. you're going to be floored with how amazing it is, think, right? So yeah. it's all about where you're coming from. So I know that... Um, and I, you know, they, they started off by having current Tesla owners yep. and that kind of thing. And I think maybe that's why you're seeing so many people are like, oh, let down here. And you right, know, it's, it's right. not that. But I really think that when people like me, who are not current Tesla owners, who are who have been waiting a really long time for something like yep. this, are, yep. are going to be the ones that are going to be the real evangelists that are like, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have no idea how far ahead I this is than what I'm used to. Now, it's only fair to point out some of the negatives that I did find in the car. And the first thing Ben showed me when I walked out to his car was this big crack that he had just found in his glass roof. Like immediately, that was the first thing that he did. I said hi and Ben showed me his crack. But it's not an insignificant crack. And in fact, it actually formed in something of a Tesla logo, even when they break their own brand. And at one point while we weren't recording, I asked him if he had any other issues with the car since he got him. And there was actually a small handful, including the screen, the big touch screen. He actually had to get that replaced. And I know there's been a lot of talk about bad fit and finish in the cars. And, and look, I gotta be honest, I'm not a car guy, so I don't really have the eye for that. I wasn't really looking for those details. I will say there was nothing that really jumped out at me that really got my attention. I mean, other than that crack in the roof that Ben pointed out. I'm not sure how much I will like having to do everything through that touch screen. Maybe it's something that you get used to, but I mean, the fact that you have to use that to open the glove box is kind of stupid to me, but then again, when I think about it, I almost never open my glove box, so who cares? Look, I'm sure it's not the greatest car ever made, and it's definitely not perfect, but why does it have to be? I mean, the shittiest Model 3 that ever rolls off the line is gonna be a thousand times better than any car I've ever had, easily. When I watched the Model 3 launch two years ago, all I wanted to know was, is it hideous? I was already sold on the idea, but I wanted to see it first. As long as it wasn't hideous, I was gonna reserve one. Well, I didn't think it was hideous, so I did. When Ben let me drive his car, again, all I wanted to know was, is there something about this car that doesn't work for me? Are there any deal breakers? Which, not being a car guy, I probably have very few deal breakers, but would there be anything that makes me not want to have this car? Would I find something that changed my mind? And honestly, there was nothing about this car that did that. <laughs> In fact, I'm probably feeling more impatient about it than ever. I have to say, I, I, I like it. I, it, has, it has not scared me. Yeah. Like I said, I was a little, I was a little nervous. Like, what if it doesn't live up? But no, I'm, I'm digging it. 
I want it. I want it more now. This is it's worse now. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm, 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 that's what I'm here for, Joe. So maybe in a few months I'll get the email that I've been waiting for for 15 years now. I've waited this long. I guess I can wait a little bit longer. Plus it'll give me time to save up a little bit. I think things tend to happen when they're supposed to. And I'll share it with you guys when it comes in, obviously. But don't worry. This isn't gonna. <laughs> this isn't gonna become a Tesla channel. I promise. But I am very curious about, you know, the electric lifestyle and I'm curious about how my life is going to change. You know, I've been advocating for this kind of stuff for a really long time and I'm ready to start living it. I'm sure there's going to be some headaches and compromises along the way, but uh, I'm, I'm ready to take them on. I'm ready to see what it's all about. But I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you have an electric car? And if so, what are the best and worst things about it? Also, let me know if you're a Model 3 reservation holder. I'm curious how many of you are out there. And I would say let me know if you're a Tesla hater, but if you're watching this video, I'm sure you already have. Do go check out Ben's video. There's a link down in the description and subscribe to his channel while you're there. He's an awesome guy and he's super smart and he surfs. I cannot surf. But again, I like that he takes a data approach to things because there's so much hype around Tesla, both good and bad. It's really good that somebody starts with the numbers and it kind of cuts through all the crap. And whether it's the electric lifestyle that you're interested in or other sustainable energy solutions, one place that you can learn about all that is Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a learning platform that teaches you how things work by walking you through the problem-solving process that created the thing in the first place. So instead of just being told what things are or how they work, you get to see how it was figured out in the first place, which creates a foundational understanding that helps you make connections in the world and lets you apply to other things in your life as well. I was always the kid in class that drove my teacher crazy because I would always be like, yeah, but how do they know that? So, brilliant right up my alley. And if you were the kind of kid that annoyed your teachers as much as I did, you can go sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe and get access to their free weekly puzzles and brain teasers, kind of keep you sharp. And the first 295 people who sign up for the premium subscription, it gives you access to all their courses, you get 20% off your subscription for life. So yeah, go check it out, brilliant.org slash answers with Joe, links in the description. Thanks a lot to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and a big huge shout out to my Patreon answer files who help keep this channel going. I cannot thank you enough. You have no idea how much this helps me do what I do. There are some new people that have joined the group. Let me give them a quick shout out real quick. We've got Laura Sanborn, Tim Chambers, Wissam Torbe, Luis Ramos, Ramos, <laughs> Rory McCabe, Hendrik Bo Anderson, Bijer Tur Torvaldson, Bijer Tur Thorvaldson. Bob O, Jane Baldwin, Mike Collins, Ben Sella, Jeffrey Bew, Bjorn Fogger, Josh Engott, and Marek Sago. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them and get access to me and other content that other people don't get to see, including videos and all kinds of junk, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. It's not junk, it's cool stuff. T-shirts are available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Please like and share this video, and if this is your first time here, uh, check out some of my other stuff, and I hope you like those, and if you do, subscribe. You'll be the first ones to see it. I post every Monday and Thursday. Post. And with that, you guys go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.